There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There were lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. Yes, I'm sorry, sir, but I can't allow you in with those rocks. It's hospital policy. He just wanted to cheer up our daughter. They're from her collection at home. Judy's rocks. I'm sorry. If you want to leave them here behind the desk, I'll make sure nothing happens to them while you're visiting. I see. Bo, darling, we have to leave the rocks here for now. But Judy need, needs her rocks. Yes, Bo, we can ask Judy if she wants to see her rocks, and maybe the doctor will allow it. But first, we have to leave them here. Ugh. Ugh. Thank you, Mr. Caterbeck. We'll see what the doctor says. And you can listen to the rocks. I'll take care of them until you get back. Chasing your punk ass all night. I'll be damned if I'm gonna let you run off after smashing my windshield. Where did you go, Kenny Howard? One messed up kid. Did your dad marry a deep sea fish or something? <laughs> I guess if I looked like that, I might go a little off the deep end too. But now you can't hurt anyone. Hopefully for a long time. <laughs> Oh ho ho, I'm gonna turn this one up if you don't mind. Ah, uh, he doesn't know, Judy. He doesn't know what you could do to him if you wanted. One day. But Mommy and Daddy are here to see you now, Judy. They're coming down the hall. Hello, Judy. Randall, will you take the radio with you, please? Thank you. Sweetheart! What are you wearing? My little girl. Judy's wearing a camisole for her own protection. Things go well, we'll be able to take it off soon. Judy, say hello to your mom and dad. Mommy, daddy. Oh, my Judy. Let me hold you, sweetheart. We missed you so much. <laughs> Mommy, stay. We're going to get you all better, Judy. Take you home. <laughs> Well, you may have to stay here for a little while, Judy. We have to make sure you're all better. And the police have to rule out her involvement in the events. You understand. How do you think she could have done that? Look at her. 
She's a child, Doctor. A child! Yes, I'm sorry I really am, but we have to cooperate with law enforcement. The police are still investigating and- Mother, we will leave here soon. <gasps> Help is coming. They're almost here. Oh, Judy. Mommy, I want my Okay, rocks. now, Judy, calm down. I Randall! Want my rocks. I'm sorry, but it appears like now is not the best time to see your daughter. Rock oh, my God. Randall! Rock okay, oh. folks. We need you to come out of the room. The weary globetrotter returns. Justina, how are you? Have you fun in our new lab? Well, if you consider amphibian dissection fun. Ah, just like old times then. Our postdoc studies in Rome. Hmm, I didn't like slimy things then, and I like them less now. I'm glad to see you haven't changed. I missed you. <laughs> Thanks for sending the tapes. I think you'll be intrigued by the results so far. Fantastico. Okay, so, uh, where can I leave my equipment? We'll go right to the lab. But first, uh, I want you to meet... Dr. Scafano! How nice to finally meet! <laughs> Doctor, meet Magnus Becker. Mr. Becker, it's a great pleasure. Your corporate headquarters is very impressive. More like a small city, I think. Yes, we're still growing into it after five years. I hope you both find it a fitting place for the bold, groundbreaking work you're accustomed to doing. And you brought your electronic instruments. I'm fascinated. But why don't you go get settled in the lab and we'll all talk over our plans in an hour. Sounds fine to me. Tina, can you show Dr. Scafano to the lab? Uh, Dr. Nobili, there's someone I need you to meet in my office. Until later, Doctor. Dr. Nobili, meet Dr. Fuzzi. As you know, Dr. Fuzzi was studying Judy Kaderbeck's peculiar abnormalities. Dr. Nobili examined the Kaderbeck girl at Westmore several days ago. Hello, Doctor. Glad to meet you. I'd be interested in your thoughts. How was Judy's disposition? She was quite agitated, to be honest. They've had her restrained since she arrived. I am told there is a second case similar to hers. Kenny Howard who Dr. Fuzzi informs us has been spotted driving northward. His destination may be Westmore and Judy Caterbeck. I have an associate in pursuit, Nick Mazzanti. Patrolman Mazzanti has been sent to apprehend the boy. Yes, if his condition is anything like Judy Caterbeck's, he's liable to be dangerous, and having the police involved is a good idea. Dr. Nobili, I'd like you to return to Westmore as soon as possible. My private helicopter should get you there in time to intercept Mr. Howard and assist the police in returning him here for observation. Won't they want to take him to a hospital? The officer in charge has an interest in delivering him here. You'd better bring along a sedative. We'll get word to Mazzanti that he should follow your instructions. Mr. Becker, I'm not sure this is the best use of my time. I should be here acclimating Dr. Schifano to the procedures and- This is what I need you to do. Dr. Nobili. This is the priority. Very well. I'll go get ready. Well, I've never ridden in a helicopter before. Doctor, I can help arrange transport for your equipment when the time comes. You should return to East Haddam and prepare what you will need to work here. Yes, that's not a problem, but the assurances I mentioned... They are of the utmost importance in keeping this work going. We run a tight ship here. Not a peep about our research escapes the compound. East Haddam is a small community, Mr. Becker, and there's been some interference from former employees. They have possession of cassette tapes that I made to record my research. I believe I've put a lid on that particular threat for the moment, but- BP has strong ties to local law enforcement, Fuzzy. Your work here will be fully insulated from prying eyes. That is the assurance I needed to hear. 
Why on earth would you make a physical recording of your notes? I'm a very slow typist. Car's all gassed up. I got what I needed packed, so we'll leave in the morning. Uh, I, I just passed your friend out front. What's he doing with that wooden sword? Oh, it's ninjutsu. It's a discipline you have to practice daily. He says it gives him a clear mind and better self-control. Looks... interesting. With everything going on, it helps me to focus. Yeah, well, we'll need that for sure. I called and talked briefly to Dr. Haynes, who's apparently Judy's primary psychiatrist. He's expecting us around noon. He's going to get an earful, and I hope he has an open mind. We can only hope. Yeah, well, maybe we shouldn't mention the crazies collecting the frogs and rocks. Just in case. Rocks? Like the ones at the marsh? Wait, you know about that too? Judy talked about them all the time. Her father brought back a rock for her collection every time he went fishing at the marsh. There was one really special stone that he gave her. She she talked about it in, like, a hushed tone, like it was a precious gemstone or something. Something strange is definitely going on with those rocks. We heard Fousey discussing it, saw some weird behavior of people in town. Maybe Judy knew what it all meant. Yeah. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to go get some sleep. I'll come and knock around nine. Okay, sounds good. I'll ride with her and see if she wants to open up any more about this. What's the matter? Oh, I guess you'll have to ride alone on your Suzuki. That, that's fine. It's not that, Bon. You know how Kujikiri helps me, right? Yeah. Considering your dad is always on edge, I think it's amazing that you're so dedicated not to follow in a destructive family pattern. Yeah, I mean, that was the main reason I started, but... Since this all started happening with Fousey and all, it's it's become more than that. It gives me a resolve, a calmness inside that keeps me focused on what's important. That's a really good thing, Marco. Which makes it all the more weird that I've been having this foreboding just now outside. I felt like I was preparing myself, you know, for, for something difficult. I think it's safe to say that Fousey won't go down without a fight. And who knows if the authorities will even listen to us. So yeah, difficult sounds right. I I know, but no, I feel like there's something more, something darker going on. So many unexplained aspects to this. The rocks, Judy, the frogs. I mean, frogs. It creeps me out too. Remember just last week? We were laughing about it at the diner. It's surreal. I just hope we're ready. That's all. If there's one thing I know, it's that you always come through. You're kind of amazing that way. Oh, No, you. <laughs> Hello, my friends. How are we this morning? Are you hungry? Oh, you are hungry. How about we go right to the music appreciation lesson today? Hmm? I give you a little concert. That's a new one. What do you think? Well, that got your attention. Okay, how about this one? 
You don't like that one too much, do you? Is this better? Judy? There's nothing over there. What are you looking at? Look, I just need to make sure you eat your breakfast and then I'll leave you alone to do whatever you're doing. Hello? Anybody home? You want this or not? I've got others to feed that actually... <laughs> Help me! Stop! What? No, 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 no! Oh my god! No! Stop that! Thanks for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 5 of Mandible Judy. Our cast this week was Dominique Jean, Nancy Graham, Chris Burke, Ty Jones, Tamaria Dow, Aaron Lillis, David Steele, Bonnie Bogovich, Julia Nervi, Graham Rowett, and many thanks to our special guests, Richard Haynes as Dr. Haynes, Lee Eddy as Catherine, and Mark Torgel as Crandall. Follow Mandible Judy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We rely on support from our listeners, so please help us keep the series going at patreon.com slash mandiblejudy. Judy.